Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Green Room with Jade Million. I am here today with Elizabeth from Aqualux Astrology. So we are going to be talking all things spirituality, astrology, Reiki, healing, and just like the current state of our world and where we're all kind of at with, you know, this thing that I feel like half the people believe in and half the people kind of like hate on it. Um, I'm a pretty big believer in it, but um, I'm really excited to have Elizabeth here to kind of give us more details about it and maybe clear the air for some people who don't know what to believe. But um, I want to start out with like how we met and just like a little bit of our backstory Okay. because we've known each other for how many years would you say? Oh my gosh, since I moved here in 2018. Yeah. So we, we met right off the bat. Yep. We've so known each other for a while. Yeah. And I met Elizabeth through like a mutual friend that we had. And when I met you, you were teaching dance mm-hmm. at a studio. Mm-hmm. And um, can you explain like how you got from kind of dance world to this world, which would you say astrology is like the overall kind of like umbrella, right? Yeah, so it I mean some people call it the occult, right? Which sounds kind of The dark. occult? Yeah. Occult. So practices. not the cult, but the occult. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Occult. Um, which just kind of encompasses everything having to do with, you know, energy healing, astrology, um, tarot, that mm-hmm. all falls under um occult practices. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, I, you know, dance was something that I did my whole life. I ended up opening a studio here and that's where we met. You came and took a dance class. I was terrible. No, you were great. You were so great. (laughs) Give yourself some credit. You killed it. (laughs) It's one thing about me, like I can do a lot of things, but dancing, like that is going to take some work. But you showed up. I showed up. That's all that matters. You know what I mean? Like just moving your body is so important. Yeah, Um, agreed. I still am like hardcore about moving the body um, Mm -hmm. when you're stressed. It's a really good stress relief. But yeah, yeah, I ended up opening my own studio. Um, 2020 hit, you know, lockdowns hit and everything was just so up in the air. Uh, I actually, you know, because we all had a lot of time at home. Mm -hmm. So I ended up um, getting back on Twitter, which I hadn't been on in a really long time. Uh, I studied astrology in college or starting in college just for fun. Mm -hmm. But I was really into it. Like, kind of obsessed right I didn't know that this could be something that I could ever do professionally so I just did it for fun it was like a hobby for me yeah and uh 2020 had a lot of time on my hands and ended up hopping back on Twitter and I saw that all of these astrologers that I followed on Twitter which I hadn't been on in years they were like we told you this was gonna happen and I was like wait (laughs) you're telling me that if I had been following the astrology to a T, I would have had a heads up on all of this. Like I, I would have done something completely different right. career wise. So I felt like there was something to that. And I just started, you know, diving more into it. And I realized there was so much knowledge and information, this ancient knowledge and information that's just kind of been lost. Mm-hmm. Um, and people have just kind of pushed to the side, but, um, Actually, the two oldest uh, careers are prostitution and astrologers. So, <laughs> wow, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> wow, that is so insane. So mm-hmm. did you feel like you had like a voice inside, like a calling almost that was like almost like spiritual leading you to do this? Because I feel like a lot of energy healers, something kind of happens and they have a wake up call and they're like, I am meant to almost be like a profit of this um belief system and I don't really know what you would call it but like the stars and everything like mm-hmm. well I wouldn't call myself a prophet yeah <laughs> but uh it was actually my Saturn return <laughs> that that I've been seeing yeah. a lot of memes about that recently and I'm like oh my god it's my turn y'all yeah you're coming up soon um no it was the end of my Saturn return 2020 was the end of my Saturn return um and we can talk more about that uh, yeah later well, if there's time yeah um but the end of my Saturn return I just started getting really obsessed with learning everything I could about astrology and taking the not the foundation that I had and mm. just building on it and I wanted to really learn how to read charts better than I did for fun. Um, I wanted to be the best. I wanted to make sure that 
Uh, everything I was sharing with my friends was real and mm -hmm, accurate. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was it wasn't just, you know, reading charts. There's yeah. a whole flow and system and structure to all of these energies. Yep. And if you know how to work with them, you can utilize them. Yep. Um, and when you know when to pause yeah. and when to take it slow, you know, it kind of helps you stay calm, cool right. and collected, even in the slower times of life right um instead of trying to go 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 that's a very like western yes. modern day practice to like never take a break right so i just started you know taking my extra time that i had and i was just consuming as much information as i could mm -hmm. and i started sharing with people around me um and then i ended up um you know closing down my studio during the um pandemic there was just so much up in the air and just right. honestly based on uh the astrology there was too much that was coming up that was going to be changing. Yeah. Um, it just didn't make sense uh, financially to mm -hmm. be pouring into a studio when I knew there were other people who could teach dance, but not everybody can do astrology. Totally. So yeah. I didn't really know like what I was going to do after the studio, but I I knew that it was time to kind of shut it down yeah. and, and move on to something else. So I ended up uh, taking a different job, kind of more corporate world type of mm -hmm. job while I kept studying. Still didn't really think I was going to do astrology seriously. And then I um, got interested in Reiki yeah. um, and was like, okay, if I could do anything right now, if I could learn anything right now, what would I want to do? Mm -hmm. And I was like, let me get my Reiki certification. Like I had no, I had no idea anything about Reiki. Um, I'd heard of it, but I was honestly kind of scared of it yeah. because um, I have a lot of water in my chart. And so like my energy field is like very sacred to me. And mm -hmm. I didn't know how I felt about another person like coming and touching my energy field. And I went and had a, a Reiki session and my whole life changed. Yeah. I mean, I had a whole spiritual awakening. Yep. Um, people who didn't fit in my life anymore just kind of fell away. But I felt more myself than ever. Right. I felt more in touch with <clears throat> myself. I felt like I was unpeeling these layers of myself that I always knew were there, but I didn't know how to access them. Yeah. So after I did about um, three Reiki sessions, um, my Reiki healer was like, you need to be doing this wow. for other people yeah. because you are a super, super intuitive person yes. and you have healing all in your chart mm -hmm. and uh, not everybody is selected for this. So Absolutely. I've been guided by a lot of people that I've just kind of had bump ins with, you know, my, right. my higher self and my intuition has led me to them, but yeah. um, I've been guided along the whole way. Like I've had some incredible teachers who have really opened up my world since 2020, but um, yeah, I've really been practicing, you know, just for fun since mm -hmm. 2010 and then 2020 came around and that's when like shit got real right and then Saturn also came um in 2020 Saturn shifted into Aquarius and my north node is in Aquarius so your north node is like this energy that your soul is trying to master in this life um it's a really important part in your chart um and I you know Saturn came into Aquarius and my north node was like okay it's time to like buckle up buttercup you right. gotta like take this seriously and wow yeah yeah. And so with Reiki, I just want to kind of share my experience with this because I did not know what the fuck Reiki was. I was like, <laughs> I I've heard of it. Like, does like a shaman like in Tulum, like have to do this to me? Like, what is this about? And Elizabeth, you started doing it and like, we were really close and I was going through something like medically, like kind of traumatic and like, I was just basically looking for any way to heal myself and just with all the like spiritual work that I've done and inner work, I know that it really does start from like the inside out. I don't necessarily turn immediately to modern medicine and modern like ways of healing um, first. Like I feel like that's more of like a last kind of step for me. So I really wanted to give Reiki a try to heal what was going on inside of my body because I had heard from multiple people that um, Reiki can really help pain points in your mm -hmm. body. And I still didn't really understand it. Like I remember when I went to you to get it done, it, it's like so hard to describe what it does, right? And I always, I've coined this term, like it's like a massage for your soul. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like, you guys. So it's, you go in and 
it has like a massage like atmosphere because you're, you're laying on a table and, um, you know, you usually have like music playing and uh, I'm not going to explain what you do. But for me personally, like I laid there for like an hour, maybe would you say like mm-hmm. an hour and a half. And it was like the deepest meditation of my life. And it was very visual for me. Um, and I just kind of let my mind visualize what it wanted to. And it was like so powerful. I'll never forget the most recent time that I did it. Um, the first time I think I went in and I was a little bit like, what's going on kind of thing. So I feel like that kind of blocked me. But then the second time I got Reiki done, I just like knew what I wanted out of it. And like, I literally met with my higher self during Reiki. I remember. And like, she was like, so dope. You guys, she had like long, all lime green hair. She was like glowing, like, and she literally like led me up this like huge, crazy staircase. And then we went into this like beautiful like temple area and she was basically like asking me to like jump off the ledge of this and I feel like it was kind of my higher self being like we really like want you to go all in on what you're doing and not have any fear because like we've got you kind of thing and there was also a lot of like trauma healing during my Reiki that came up like she was basically telling me to let go a lot of trauma that I've experienced from men in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, I think like I was having an ear issue and it kind of came across that I was letting too much male like influence and perspective into my ear Mm -hmm. when it came to my career and just who I am. And so that was really interesting. Like just so many like undescribable almost um, things and visions and messages came through and like I was on no drugs like this was me being (laughs) sober but it kind of almost feels like what I would think you know you kind of like tripping or having that experience so I don't like now I kind of want you to explain your end of Reiki and what you're doing while say like I'm laying on the table sure but I mean that's the best way I could describe it guys like yeah that was perfect yeah Yeah. everybody has a different experience yes and everyone sees you know, different visions. Some people see colors. Some Mm -hmm. people see words. Some people see family members. Some people see scenes. Um, It just, you know, is different for each person. So it's cool to hear the feedback of what everybody sees, but everyone sees something. Mm -hmm. I've never had anyone walk out and say like, oh, I felt nothing. Right. That's just never happened. Um, Even if it's just they're like, I feel really calm and peaceful. Which you do afterwards. I literally Mm -hmm. feel so good yeah it's like it's like a bath for your energetic field so you know you got to keep up with it too like Mm -hmm. you can't take a shower one time and be like okay I'm good for for the rest of my life like you got to keep up with it yep and every time you go you can basically have healing that goes deeper and deeper but the way that I experience it is you know I get into my meditative state we clear Mm -hmm. the space with some sage um The crystals, uh, I love working with crystals. You don't have to, but Mm -hmm. I just think it's uh, a fun way for uh, you to connect and get grounded, you know, as uh, as someone who's on my table. And the crystals, you know, they they speak to me. They tell me which ones are ready to work with you, and so that's pretty cool. I'm never the one who's leading that. Yeah. Um. And like intuitively, you go for certain crystals Mm -hmm. when somebody's on the table. And it's always different Mm -hmm. for every single person. It's never the same. Uh. And if you're not sure how that works, it's just like my eyes kind of, you know, graze over, uh, my crystals, and it's like, okay, this one, you know, is ready. We want some smoky quartz. You Mm -hmm. know, we want some, um, agate. We want you know, uh, some rose quartz if we're really working with the heart chakra. So they, they, they call to me and they speak to me and it's just a very soft whisper, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and then, yeah, we just get started. We open up your, uh, energetic field, uh, and there are always guides. Everybody has spirit guides, whether you want to acknowledge them or not. Um, they are there for you. Yes. And if you don't feel like you have a spirit guide, just ask them to speak a little louder, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, especially with Saturn shifting into Pisces, which happened yesterday. We're starting a new uh, yeah. three-year cycle with Saturn shifting into Pisces. It's going to be all about your spiritual practices. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Um, and yeah, so guides come in and the way that I see it is there's like a big hall. Um, this is always the same for me with everybody who's 
on the table. It starts out with everyone kind of being in this big hall, almost like a medieval castle. Uh, and there are like mounds of uh, human figures, right? So they're just representing what my human mind can can see mm -hmm. um, and understand. But they're just basically guides that you have. And some people have a lot of masculine guides. Um, you have a lot of feminine guides. Yeah. Tauruses usually do because you guys are ruled by Venus. Um, and they just like show up and they guide me through the process. So I stay in my meditative state. Um, we work through your chakras, starting uh, at the crown chakra, down through your feet. Mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, place my hands on the on the chakras and that just helps open them up and clear them out. We want to make sure they're spinning correctly mm -hmm. uh, so that your energy can flow smoothly. Yeah. Uh, and then I clear out the field. So my favorite thing to do is when I get to work with the tuning fork and mm -hmm. the rain stick. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's really powerful. Yeah. So we can use vibrations to heal, which is actually going to be more of a mainstream practice. But um, they're doing studies right now in Japan, actually, where they're using uh, vibrations to shrink tumors and it's working. Yeah. Oh, I literally just got the chills. Yeah. It's really exciting. So yeah. with Pluto shifting into Aquarius, there's going to be more of that too. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I mean, right now we are going through a spiritual awakening as, as Huge. a human race. Huge. And this is what I was even touching on my last episode where I was talking about spirituality towards the end. It almost feels like this second coming that is talked about so much in religion mm -hmm. um because the amount of people who are waking up to how real um energy is yes. is wild to me and yeah. just like it just feels so right mm -hmm. and when i'm in that practice and that state of knowing that you know all this stuff is is real and it's how the world is meant to work mm -hmm. it it just like there's something really calming and peaceful and grounding about that, you know? Yeah. And I love that you used the word energy because uh, everything is energy, yeah. everything. And energy can't be created or destroyed. So mm -hmm. we have to learn how to transmute it right, right. and transfer it. So uh, people can call it whatever they want. They can call it God. They can call it Allah. They can call mm. it the universe. But at the end of the day, it's just energy. Right. Like, let's take away the language and let's just call it what it is. It's energy. Mm -hmm. That's it. And you can tell, right? Like, your energetic field uh, expands out like eight to ten feet. Mm -hmm. um, when people will come into me, their energetic field will be pretty tight. And my goal mm. is to expand the energetic field. So it's really fun to see uh, the start of someone's session mm. and then see how much their field expands by the end of the session. And I can just tell when I'm, um, I use a selenite wand to comb out people's fields at the very end. And wow. it's crazy, like yeah. how far people's fields will open. And you can know, like, you know that your energetic field is real because you know when somebody walks into it from the back, right? Yeah. Your eyes don't see that, yes. but you know when somebody's behind you. So true. It's your energetic field that they just walked into. Yeah. And oh so my God, yeah. if you just kind of like take away the woo-woo of it and just put it in real terms, like everybody has intuition. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the ability to um, utilize their intuition, but we all have different gifts, just yeah. like how we have different gifts in the material world, right? right. It's the same right. thing. So with Saturn shifting into Pisces, um, Saturn hasn't been in Pisces for 30 years, mm -hmm. and this is the last sign of the zodiac. So Saturn is wrapping up a whole 30-year cycle. Saturn is the planet of karma, uh, foundations, limitations, restriction, and structure. So uh, I'm really excited. This is going to be like a super exciting transit, but uh, Pisces is the sign of spirituality, mm -hmm. and Saturn oh, yeah. is about maintaining structure and having integrity. And so Saturn's coming in and saying, okay, what are your spiritual practices? Right. What are you doing to connect with your higher self? Mm -hmm. um, even if it's just, you know, doing meditation every day right. or praying um, yeah. or journaling, it can look different for everybody. It doesn't mean that you have to go to church. Yeah. Uh, and some people do want to go to church mm -hmm. because that's how they like to practice their spirituality. For me this morning, I got up, I had a glass of water because it's really important for me to acknowledge that I'm in this body and honor my body by giving it water first thing. Uh, did a meditation, went on a walk, and then came back and put my feet in the grass. Yes. And that was my spiritual practice for the day. Yes, and that helped that. ground me out. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as I'm maintaining some kind of, you know, daily commitment to connecting inwardly to myself, I'm good. 
So true. I feel a massive difference in my days when Mm -hmm. I don't do that. I am really trying to work on being more consistent with it because it's very easy to put that stuff to the side. It doesn't feel pressing until you see the difference, you know? And it's like, to me, I have to take that as seriously as I take this, as I take music, as I take work. Like that's even something I've been doing with, you know, all my responsibilities, right? Like if they're my responsibilities that I'm putting on myself, I'm almost less likely to do them. But why would I show up for someone else before before me? It's like with my shows that other people have booked me out to perform at their venue and perform other people's music and I'll go dead tired because I have to do it. And then it's like, but then maybe I'll like push off streaming or something when that's going to directly benefit me and my career. Mm -hmm. So I've been really trying to switch my mindset of like, how are you going to show up for someone else and not show up for yourself? Like do it tired, you know, like do it when you don't feel like you have time. Especially when you don't feel like it. Yeah. It's probably when you need it the most. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. It's so – it just makes the biggest difference in my day. I'm so much happier and less anxiety and stuff. So Yeah. And we don't know where we came from. Right. And we don't know where we go after this. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't claim to know that. Yeah. But we are here for a short period of time. And there's been too many, you know, signs in my life and just books I've read and and, uh, you know, sermons I've sat through and people I've talked to who are not religious. But we go somewhere after this. Yeah. And I want to make sure that wherever I go next, I've done whatever I'm supposed to do here. And when I'm keeping up with my spiritual practices, uh, I feel a difference. Absolutely. In my identity, in my groundedness within myself. Yep. Um, and just in how I'm able to show up for other people as well. Oh, yeah. If I put my spirituality to the side, uh, I end up being really tired and yes. I, I feel exhausted and, and like I can't show up for the people around me. So true. And it's all the internal work first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I totally agree with that. Okay. So I want to dive into astrology. Let's do I it. think everybody's probably um, at least intrigued by this topic. For people who love it, this is going to be really fun. Um, so. I kind of want to dive into each sign. Okay. And I want to go through them. Do you know them from like – Yes. Okay. (laughs) You're like like literally the most basic thing. I do know that. Um, It would be really bad if I didn't. (laughs) Yeah. I don't honestly. I I mean I probably could but not in order. But okay. So I want to have you just pick one word Mm -hmm. for each sign. Do you feel like you could do that? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So let's start. What's the first sign in the – astrological in the zodiac is aries okay (laughs) okay aries i'm gonna be nice don't worry no don't you don't have to be (laughs) i will be okay every sign has light and dark so it's about what you do with the energy (laughs) okay Uh, i could give you two if you wanted to do a light and a dark oh that's yes i love that let so elizabeth is going to give us a light and a dark for each for each sign sign. let's do it Okay. okay aries Bold is their positive word, and impatient is their lesser. Love. Uh, Taurus. I'm a Taurus, <laughs> y'all. Uh, stable and greedy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I love money. <laughs> uh, Gemini, um, chatty, mm-hmm. and inconsistent. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, cancer, psychic, and crybaby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Leo. Um, oh, I got to think about Leo. I love, I love Leos so much. They're really special to me. They're um, special. Leo is the sun. So like everybody comes to Leo. So yeah. Leo warmth, um, and egotistical, mm-hmm. uh, Virgo, <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting, I'm like getting in my head. Uh, Virgo, uh, being of service mm. and um, uh, I'm trying to think of a negative. I feel like I don't Virgo. know. Any. Nitpicky. Virgos mm. can be nitpicky. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard that. Mm-hmm. Like very particular. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll, you know, they'll tell you when you're not 
not doing it right. Yeah, for sure. They okay. won't hold back. Uh, Libra, um, classy but flighty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Scorpio, powerful but controlling. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Me and all my Scorpio exes. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, Sagittarius, fun. Yep. I was going to say that. And over the top. Wow. Okay. Like they don't have limits. Yeah. Yeah. Which can be like a lot. Oh, that's my dad. He literally has no limits, but he's fun. Sometimes. <laughs> dad. Yeah, I know he's watching this. Um, Capricorn, hardworking, but cold. Mm-hmm. Um, Aquarius, visionary genius. They're visionary geniuses. Yep. Um, they're also cold. They're both ruled by Saturn, Capricorn, yeah. and Aquarius, but Aquarius can be aloof. Yeah, absolutely. They can be very detached from their emotions. Yep, yep. And uh, Pisces, dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> Pisces are dreamy, uh, but dishonest. Yeah. I love you, Pisces. I promise. <laughs> Ooh, those are so good. Is that all of them? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh my God, those are amazing. Wait, guys, I'm a Taurus, so I'm greedy and that makes me sad. But I feel <laughs> like Tauruses, we just love like – like when you say greedy – That's the dark side. So right. they can be greedy. Yes. But Tauruses can also be incredibly giving with their money because Taurus and Scorpio, they rule over the financial axis. So Taurus and Scorpio both have to deal with money. Um, and it's just about, you know, how you handle – finances, how you handle the money that is given to you. So yeah. Tauruses oh, can be greedy, but they can also be very giving with their money. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So I just thought it'd be fun to kind of talk about like my big three and what big three means. Yeah. So when you hear like, oh, what's your big three? Mm-hmm. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, sure. So most people know their sun signs, which um, that's based on specifically on the calendar year. So it's pretty easy to figure out, right? If you were born August 19th, you're a Leo. Uh, if you were born uh, January 1st, you're a Capricorn. Mm-hmm. Like that's that just is what it is. But unless you pull someone's chart, you won't know off the bat what their big three are. So the big three is your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. So your sun sign is um, your identity, mm-hmm. um, the way in which you express yourself. Uh, and it's, it's uh, you know, it also has to deal with your ego, uh, but it's how you carry yourself. So what people perceive you as or not necessarily? Not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. That more has to do with your midheaven, which is a whole other thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and then your moon sign is who you are in private. It's how you process and deal with your emotions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the And it also is tied to the mother and the relationship with the mother. So the moon sign is very, very private. Um, and it's it's who you are if you're at home by yourself. Nobody's around. You act different than mm-hmm. you do when you're in a crowd. Everybody does. Um, yeah. And that's just how it is. We don't necessarily notice it because mm-hmm. we just are who we are. Um, but that's the, yeah, that's the moon sign. And then your rising sign, that's like the front door of your entire chart. So the rising sign um, is really, really, maybe arguably the most important of the three when you're coming in contact with the rest of the world. So um, it's how you, uh, it's how you perceive the world. Uh, it's kind of how, you know, if somebody were to walk into your house, what would your entryway look like? And that's your rising sign. So the rising sign is super important when you're delineating a chart, when you're looking at a chart, um, because that's kind of what sets up the wheel to see where all the planets fall in the different houses. Um, and when there are transits happening, uh, where those transits are going to act out. So if you're having a lot of action in your seventh house, that's going to involve other people because your seventh house is your house of your one-on-one relationships. Um, if you have something, uh, you know, like a lot of transits happening in your fourth house, that's a very private house. And so that's going to be something that you're going through very internally, but you're able to process privately. If there's something uh, happening in your 10th house, a lot of action going on in your 10th house. It's going to be very public. The 10th house is your public image, your career, your reputation. So that gives us like an idea of how and where things are going to play out in your life when the transits are happening. Wow. So that's, and that, when you say all that, you kind of go into depth when you read charts, which we're going to kind of do a little bit of today. Um, it's just so people like don't get confused. It's 
when when you get your chart read, this is like the detail and the depth that Elizabeth would go into. And it's almost like you're kind of giving hints and clues about your future and you like can. what your yeah. what your life is gonna like play out like and what you should like focus on, right? Yeah. It's really cool because you can use astrology for so many different things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can use it as a prediction tool, but remember, no astrologer is God. Mm -hmm. So some people do come to astrologers wanting to have a conversation with God and like, we're just vessels. Yeah. We're human, yep. uh, but we just have the ability to kind of look at these charts and have an idea of what's coming up. Right. Um, but you can also use astrology, which this is my favorite way to use astrology, is to get a better look at yourself and what's going on internally. Yeah. And how do you process emotions? Because everybody processes emotions differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, what does your relationship with your family look like? How important is career to you? And how do you heal yourself? Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different way of healing themselves. Some people need to talk it out. Some people need to... Uh, be by themselves. Some people need to work out. Some people need to write out. Right. Um, there's all different ways for everyone to heal. And we're here to heal. Yeah. What are we healing from? We don't really know. Yeah. What are we healing for? Again, we don't really know. But when you are going through that healing journey, something about it feels right. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So going back to big three, my big three, yes. Taurus. Your Taurus sun. Mm-hmm. Scorpio moon, Scorpio moon, yeah. and a Capricorn rising. Yeah, and I want to say this is the hardest working girl in the industry. Don't get it twisted. She's Capricorn rising, Jupiter and Capricorn. Like nobody will outwork Jade <laughs> ever. She's amazing, and she puts her money where her mouth is, and she always shows up. Um, you're also a full moon baby, which is so powerful. Really, so what you are a Taurus sun and a Scorpio moon. So. Full moon babies are so powerful. Wow. Full moons are the most powerful uh, point of the cycle of the moon. It's the the most powerful energy. I don't know if you felt it, but there is a full moon. Um, it hits super early on Monday morning. Full moon. Um, I'm sorry, on Tuesday. On Tuesday morning, there was a full moon in Virgo. And it was powerful. Wait, Tuesday was like a rough day for me. Yeah, it was a really, really <laughs> crazy full moon. Yeah. Oh, wow. So this full moon was in Virgo and it kind of like uh, started the initiation process of Saturn shifting into Pisces um, mm -hmm. because Virgo and Pisces are on the same axis. So yeah, it was a really powerful full moon and full moons are for releases and completions. So if you ever feel, that's why people say like, oh, watch out, there's crazy drivers on a full, must be a full moon, right? That's real. Yeah. Uh, full moons are peak emotion, but they're also peak culmination. So that's when, you know, the seeds sprout, the flowers bloom uh, after a six month period. So you got to set the, you know, place the seeds and and set the intentions. And then six months later, you'll start to see those seeds start to sprout if you're working with the with the moon cycle, which I recommend everybody start looking into how to yeah. work with the moon cycles. But yeah, you're a full moon baby. So that means you have super powerful energy. You know how to see things through to completion. You know, you can see the bigger picture. And just by showing up in a room, you have a very powerful presence. Mm, cool. And then my Scorpio moon, that makes me <laughs> what does that make me uh just like emotional right yeah so uh the scorpio moon actually it's in its fall in scorpio because uh it loves being in taurus um and because it's stable and it's steady and it's consistent and so when our emotions are stable and steady and consistent like that's really nice right right, right. um but the opposite side of that is scorpio which you know there's a lot of depth there's no um there's no like end to the depth of your emotions. You can yeah. feel things so much deeper than most people can, um, but you're also super intuitive as well. And um, Scorpio rules over the sacral chakra, which is the creative chakra. So it makes you ultra creative. And if you're not expressing your creativity, it can get you in an emotional like cluster. Yes. So you have to make sure that you're always being creative, having some creative outlet to get your energy moving. Otherwise, your emotional world will feel like there's so much emotion that's like wanting to bubble up and you can't release it anywhere. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Wow. That's, I, I definitely feel that. So did you, you brought like what is in the folder? Yeah, I brought your chart. So do you want to like just maybe highlight a couple interesting things? Sure. 
So um, you're a Capricorn rising and your Jupiter's in Capricorn. So Jupiter is the planet of luck and abundance and expansion and optimism and opportunity. And being in Capricorn, which is you know, the hardworking uh, karmic sign, your luck will only come to you if you work hard. And yeah. you know that. Feel that. <laughs> Feel that. <laughs> yeah. Like if you don't show up, no one will show up for you. But it's just part of, yeah. you know, the it's part of the, the contract that you signed up for. And that's also wow. what I want to remind people of too. Like we signed up for these placements and we're not meant to be victims of any of these yep. placements. We're always meant to supersede our placements. Damn. So you always, you never want to say, okay, well, I'm a Scorpio, so I can just be a bitch, right? right. Uh, you have to say, okay, well, I'm a Scorpio and I'm able to take energy and transmute it. And if I don't, then I'm going to get stuck with someone else's energy and then I get cranky and angry. Mm -hmm. But that's because as a Scorpio, you maybe didn't take that energy and transmute it. And that's what Scorpio is all about. It's about transmuting the energy and purifying it. Yeah. So if you, um, yeah, when you have your, your Jupiter and Capricorn, your luck comes through your hard work, but Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Saturn always rewards hard work. So if you show up and you have integrity and you are putting in the work, you will get rewarded. Sometimes Capricorn placements can have delays, mm -hmm. um, but that's because Saturn wants you to receive the biggest reward that you can possibly receive. Okay. So I'm really excited for your Saturn return um, because oh, yeah. being a Saturn ruled chart, this is like a really peak, uh, going to be a peak moment for you for sure. And you're putting in the work. Yeah. Um, you have your Saturn in Aries. So that's all about, you know, finding your individual voice and taking care of your body. Mm. And I know some people who have their Saturn in Aries who really don't take care of their bodies. And so I want to applaud you on that Thank because you. I know that's a really important um, aspect of your life. And yeah. That's you doing your Trying. Saturn return work before you get there. So right. if you are not doing your Saturn return work before you get there, then your Saturn return is going to be really hard. If you put it. in the work on your Saturn return before you get there, which happens um, starting at age 29 and a half, uh, to, to 31. So mine's not for a couple of years then. Yeah. Yours will start. You'll have a little taste of it in 2025. Saturn will shift into Pisces for a, a little, I'm sorry, Saturn will shift into Aries for, uh, a bit and then it'll retrograde back into Pisces. And then your Saturn return officially starts, uh, February 13th, 2026. All right. I'll yeah. be looking out for that. <laughs> it's going to be a good time. <laughs> um, you have your sun in the fourth house. So you are a Taurus, but the fourth house is traditionally ruled by cancer. So your family is ultra important to you mm -hmm. and you feel most comfortable um, at home mm -hmm. and you find a lot of uh, healing and peace when you are preparing food for yourself and you're in the kitchen. Yep. That's another way for you to get your Scorpio moon energy out is by, you know, uh, preparing food and, and using food as a creative outlet. And you also have your Scorpio moon at a 22 degrees, which is a Capricorn degree um, in the 10th house at the last degree of your 10th house. So that gives a, it's like a double Capricorn signature because the 10th house is traditionally ruled by Capricorn. So the houses always trump the signs. So what house your planets are in is actually more important and actually shows uh, kind of how that energy will play out. So you want to look at the houses as different stages. Like if you're putting on a production, there's like 12 different stages. The planets are the different actors on the stage. Okay. And then the... Uh, this sign is like the, the costumes or the clothes that they're wearing. Oh, cool. So you have a lot of Capricorn signatures on here. I love Capricorn. Yeah. Like y'all are the real deal. You're the goats. You're mm -hmm. nobody will ever outwork a Capricorn. Aquarius comes close, but mm -hmm. it's like Aquarius will go home at like 10 p.m. and yeah. Capricorn will go home at like 1 a.m. Yeah. Because they're working. Yeah. <laughs> that is so me. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Is there anything else in the chart that you wanted to say? Is there anything you want to know? <laughs> I mean, what does the next few months for me look like, do you think? Um, oh. Based on the astrology. Okay, well, right now, March is a crazy month. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of in between worlds right now. We're letting go of cycles that have been happening for the last 15 years and the last 30 years. Um, we're also wrapping up the age of Pisces, which was a 2,000-year cycle. And wow. we're shifting into the age of Aquarius, which is 
another 2000 year cycle. That's huge. So if you're alive right now, this is a really cool time to be living and you're meant to be here. Uh, you are a part of the puzzle and we need you. Yeah. So it's really important for people to stay present and stay grounded and not get scared of the change. The, mm -hmm. the change is inevitable, but again, you signed up for being right. here right, right. now. Um, so honestly, with Saturn and Pisces, there's going to be a lot of you know preparation for your Saturn return over the next three years. So mm -hmm. this is Saturn's like final test with you before um, your rewards will start coming in uh, mm -hmm. during your Saturn return. So the next few months, there's there's a lot happening. So we have a um, we just had Saturn shift into Pisces yesterday, and then we have a Jupiter uh, Chiron conjunction on March twelfth. Um, Chiron is uh, it's a pain point, but it's also a a point uh, in the chart where there's opportunity for immense amounts of healing. So uh, with the Jupiter Capricorn, and remember Jupiter expands whatever it touches, it amplifies it. So people are going to feel either super healed um, on March 12th, or there's going to be a lot of shadow work that comes mm. up that people are going to realize. Um, it's trying to get us to take responsibility for our own participation in um, our self undoing in different relationships. So uh, the Jupiter Capricorn, I'm sorry, the Jupiter Chiron conjunction is going to be really huge. That's March 12th. And then we have a new moon in Aries at zero degrees Aries, which is really special and cool because it's a very, very, very first sign, the first uh, degree of the zodiac. That's on March 21st. So really good time to set new intentions, um, especially in regards to your Saturn return because your Saturn's at a three degrees in Aries. So that's going to be a nice conjunction point. Um, once Saturn moves into Aries for you. And you can use all of these new moon energies um, and full moon, you know, energies for transits that come down the line, which mm -hmm. is really cool. If you kind of have like a heads up, then, you know, like you can set your intentions for what you want your Saturn return to be on this new moon in Aries on March 21st, wow. even though it's like three years, yeah. you know, yeah. in the future. Um, wow. And then Saturn will take, uh, his transit in Pisces to kind of help you see what you need to work on and readjust before your Saturn return really starts. So I recommend anybody who needs to like, you know, set new intentions, start a new business. You have an idea for a business, but you don't really know where it's going. Like use this new moon in uh, Aries energy because it's just, it's really beautiful. And we have all planets direct right now. So we love that. There's forward momentum happening. Um, and then on March 23rd, Pluto moves into Aquarius. Pluto is going to be starting a new 20-year cycle. So this is really big. Like if you think about what has shifted from 2008 when Pluto was in Capricorn uh, until 2023 when Pluto is now wrapping up in Capricorn, there's been a lot of changes and shifts, especially in regards to uh, structures and and top down structures specifically. So that's all going to shift again because Pluto is the power or the planet of power and control. So okay. Pluto moving into Aquarius is going to kind of redistribute power back to the people, which is going to be really mm, nice. I and, feel that coming. And sweet, yeah. And and you're going to get rewarded for like showing up as yourself and being an individual, which right. is great. I love um, that. And then we have Gemini. Uh, sorry, Mars in Gemini, uh, which is going to move into Cancer March 25th. Mars has been in Gemini for seven months, which mm. is wild. Mars is usually in a sign for six weeks. Mm. But because there was a Mars retrograde, um, it's just been in, in Gemini for a really long time. So that's going to be really nice, especially for you having your uh, your Venus in Gemini. Yes. So uh, Mars is actually coming in to conjunct your Venus. So you know, just be on the lookout for any <laughs> men who you're talking to right now. <laughs> like in a good way or a bad way? In a be good on the way. In a good way. You could have some, you could have some suitors. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, some there, nice. <laughs> there's some suitors out here. <laughs> some nice energy coming in there. Yeah, for okay, sure. Okay. Um, so actually that kind of brings me to, I want to just ask a couple like spicy questions about signs. Okay. And we'll start with, who do you think is the most compatible sign for me? Oh, that's so complex. So I would have to look at, the whole right. chart. I would want to look at their moon sign. I'd want to look at their uh, Venus sign, their Mars sign, and their Mercury sign. 
So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Too complex. <laughs> I guess I'll have to get all the charts from the dudes I'm talking to and just yeah. send them to you. Yeah. Um, okay. What sign do you think is like the most sexual or the best in bed? I, I knew you were going to ask this. <laughs> <laughs> My Scorpio moon. <laughs> so, uh, Scorpio rules over the act of sex itself. But Pisces rules over bedroom pleasure. Wow. So I got to give it up for Pisces. Okay, Pisces. Um, what sign do you think is like the meanest or the coldest? Like that they come across really mean sometimes. Aquarius and Scorpio. Yeah, that's funny that my most recent ex is a Scorpio. The one before that was Aquarius. <laughs> they were both mean sometimes, but, <laughs> but they might call me mean. But anyway, Um what sign is the least trustworthy? Pisces. Okay. Um, what sign is usually like the most attractive to people? Uh, I think Libra is like the prettiest. Yeah. Kim Kardashian's a 29 degree Libra. So uh, 29 degrees is always the most, uh, you know, it has like the most energy of that sign. So uh, Libra is like the prettiest. Uh, people are intrigued by Scorpios. Yeah. Um, yeah. That I would say Libra. People also love Leos too. Leos are a good mm, time. Yeah. Okay. I feel like that. Uh, that is a great kind of overview of astrology. And for maybe somebody who doesn't believe in all this, like, what is like something that you could say to kind of wrap up, like what? what you believe in and why you think that it is so important. Yeah, I would say get your chart read. Yeah. You know, a lot of people who don't believe in astrology, they have no they've never had their chart read. They don't know what their moon sign is. They don't know what a moon sign is. Um but I would say have your chart read. Um there's some websites that you can just plug in your information. Mm -hmm. Uh I got to say CoStar is bullshit. Oh, shit. Yeah, don't listen to CoStar. Their algorithm is not accurate. Um, if you want a good astrology app that will just – won't it, do, it doesn't go into the technicals, so it's like a nice way to kind of uh, just start into astrology. It's called The Pattern. Uh, they do a pretty good job of giving you an idea of what energies are happening for you, um, mm -hmm. and it's just written in like human language that everybody can understand. Um, but I would say, you know, plug your chart in somewhere, get your birth information. Uh, how, there's so many astrologers out there now um, and you can plug in on websites, too, and they'll just give you like a computer generated chart reading. That's actually how I started. And I, my mind was blown. I didn't know what all the planets meant, but the way that it was breaking it down for me, I was like shocked at mm -hmm. how this actually had an exact description of how I felt on the inside, but I wasn't even able to put words to yeah. all of these different pieces of me. Um, and understanding that everybody has every sign, you have every sign in you. Yeah. Uh, everybody has every sign in their chart. It's just about how each sign plays out for you in your life. Okay. So, okay. and, and some people who don't identify with their sun sign, uh, it's because people identify usually more with their rising sign. Yeah. Okay. So you got to find out what your rising sign and what your moon sign is. Yes. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. So just check it out. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank and for having me. I want to plug how people can book with you sure. and what they can book. So thank if you'll you. tell them really quick. Yeah. You can follow me on Instagram at Aqua Lux Astrology, A-Q-U-A-L-U-X Astrology, or you can book with me online at aqualuxastrology.com. Yes, and it, that's for getting your chart read and Reiki. Yes. You offer t those services, correct? Yeah, I do uh, I do chart <clears throat> readings. I do very limited Reiki just because it takes a lot more of my energy. Yeah. Um, but I do have Reiki available for people in Nashville. And I do chart readings via Zoom. So I can work with you no matter where you live. And yeah, guys, it's so worth it and so powerful. Like I just, I love it. And I'm, de I definitely need to get on the Reiki table. Yeah. Soon. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here, Elizabeth. Thank you really for having me. Really appreciate it. Um, guys, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I am Jade Million. Uh, my TikTok is Jade Million. I did have a single come out recently called Warzone. So make sure to go stream that and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you guys are watching this, Hit the subscribe button. That helps me so much. Like the video, comment, interact with me, and 
the show. Make sure to follow Elizabeth as well. Um, you post a, a lot of cool stuff about astrology too and just a lot of like informative stuff that I think, you know, yeah. if people are just dipping their toe in, yeah. it's, you're a great follow. I try to make it bite-sized because it yeah. can get complex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But all right. I, thank you guys so much for um, tuning into another episode of The Green Room and rate the show, leave a review, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye, guys.